Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you a quick tutorial on the player character End of Things within Above VTT. So you can see I have this character on the scene, Galavan Dragonmore, uh, that the DM has to place on the scene for you. You cannot place your own token on the scene. But from there you can uh, press S or the select button and drag and move them about uh, the scene as you need to. If you need to measure, you can click R or this ruler button and um, it will allow you to uh, measure distances while holding the left click button if you press right click you can um, bend the measuring path and continue to measure that distance um, additionally if you go into the settings tab over here you can turn on measure while dragging, to dragging tokens and uh, while you're dragging your token around it will measure continuously for you if you pick it back up um, quickly after releasing the left click it will uh, continuously measure that path for you as well uh, moving on, on the top tools here, we have draw. There's lots of different options if you need to like highlight like this area. Like, hey team, we need to go to kill this guy right here. Let me redo that. Uh, kill this big guy right here. And they're like, what big guy where? And they're like, oh god, we will follow this path. And then you draw this arrow and like, there we go. That's how we get to him. And um, you know, it's different ways that you can utilize these tools, of course. Um, and then, of course, there is a AOE tool. You can change the size, uh, style, acid, fire, lightning, necrotic, whatever. And then different shapes. So a 20-foot circle of fire will look like this. As your wizard says that they cast fireball inevitably. And um, you can just move that and delete it as needed. Uh, going back into the settings tab, though, where I showed you that ruler, there's a bunch of different local settings that uh, players can set in here. Uh, these are all, as I mentioned, local settings, so they won't affect anyone else except for yourself. Except for these streaming P2P ones, if you guys, you know, the party wants to use these, everyone needs to have this enabled so you can see each other's dice rolls or cursor and ruler moving about on the screen. Uh, but, you know, you can go through these and check out what each one of them does. If you hover over the text, a little pop-up window will pop up uh, telling you exactly what it is. So I like to turn on this measure while dragging tokens. I like to turn on vision check while moving tokens. That makes it so that while you're moving the token, if you're using uh, vision and darkness and light, it'll continuously update their vision instead of just updating once they uh, you release the mouse click and to the point that they're um, landed on. Uh, you can change some of these other settings, disable capture of PC tab rolls, um, only really enable that if you like have another window open and you don't want to be able to capture those uh, character sheet rolls from that. Uh, you can change the stat blocks, which um, don't really need to worry about unless you are picky. Uh, um, you can... Uh, go into these performance settings, and I personally always disable D&D &D dice. Um, I think the physics 3D dice are stupidly slow and not needed personally. Um, I totally get wanting to see dice rolled around on the screen, but I'd rather just have a quick dice roll and get the game rolling. Uh, so if you do that, it'll essentially just roll a random number uh, generator instead of the 3D D&D &D dice. So let's see if I click that, see, instantly rolls that dice. If I disable that, roll it again. Oh god, let's see. See, it takes like two seconds longer, but sometimes you're rolling like 8d6, and it's like, come on, roll, roll, roll. Oh, the one's cocked. Why isn't it landing yet? It's like, yeah, come on. I'd rather just have it be a quick dice rolls, and it really helps reduce a lot of lag when you uh, enable this setting. Uh, you can, there's other debugging settings here. Really don't need to worry about these too much. Uh, never enable this fetch monster stat block unless like monster stat blocks for whatever reason aren't working for you. This will 100% slow down your uh, performance. And auto read connect is only recommended if uh, you have an unstable connection and you're just constantly disconnecting for whatever reason. But let's get into the nitty gritty of like the actual character sheet. So if I click the sheet button here, you can see that uh, it shows you, you know, the D&D Beyond character sheet. We have some uh, inputted above VTT role settings and roles and debuffs you can input here. Uh, you can go through and change any of these if you'd like. Uh, this will change if you roll both your versatile. Um, for what it's worth also, these above VTT role settings only work if you click the icon role next to uh, the weapon or action or whatever. Um, so you can change your crit damage, uh, crit range, uh, add it to what you want to add to attack, so like a d4 or whatever. You can put any numbers in here, even just a flat number like 4 or 3 or 25, I don't know. Um, maybe you're blessed and you want to add a d4 to your uh, ability checks or saving throws, so you put that into there too. Um, but we also do have these rolls, buffs, debuffs that are, you know, standard 
kind of uh, reoccurring ones that pop up often, like a Barbarian's Rage, or like I mentioned, uh, Bless from a, uh, you know, being cast Bless on you, or if you're a Ranger like this character is, Hunter's Mark is a very common one. So I have Hunter's Mark enabled here. If I click the damage button, you can see it rolls the 1d8 plus 4 plus 6. If I hover over this icon, it'll actually show you the full uh, line that it rolls right there. Um, if I, maybe I'm blessed too, so let's throw bless on there, and let's roll the to hit. So you can see from there, it actually rolls that bless as well, the 1d4 is thrown on there. And if I roll from this icon, it will, as I mentioned, roll the to hit roll, has that bless on there, and the damage roll has that hunter's mark on there too. Maybe sometimes there are some things in there that you just constantly want to have linked to this action or whatever. I personally, like... For a rogue in my my game, I added their sneak attack to their uh, to their weapon so that they don't have to scroll to other or wherever it is and find sneak attack. They can just click it right next to their weapon. So a way that you can do this is you I don't know if you saw, but I clicked on the notes of a of this weapon, this longbow, and it opens up this side window. From here, you find the notes little uh, input area and hit backslash R or backslash IR if you want to roll with the uh, icon roll and uh, just type in whatever damage you want. So say it's a, or modifier or dice command, what have you. So say I'm just going to do like for uh, Hunter's Mark again. So I typed in uh, backslash IR 1D6 and then just right after it, I'm going to type in Hunter's Mark. Uh, click off of that, back to the game log. And if I click this button right here in the notes, you can see it's titled Hunter's Mark. It rolls 1d6. And let's go ahead and just like actually, um, I'm going to take this Hunter's Mark off of him. Uh, let's roll that full damage. You can see it does the the blessed to hit roll. Shows that 1d4. The standard longbow roll doesn't have that d6 added from, you know, I took off that debuff. But then it does have this Hunter's Mark that I custom added in here. So that's a fun way, an easy way to add different abilities or extra special you know roles uh, that you may have come up with or that just aren't included in the character sheet for whatever reason to a character um, as this character is a ranger they do have some aoe spells and fun spells that they can uh, use uh, actually do they have any aoe spells do i have anything set up on here uh doesn't really look like it do i um okay so Let's go ahead and let's like manage my spells real quick. Let's delete uh, a couple of these. Let's add a spell that has a AOE to it. So like, um, let's see. What's a good one, guys? Spike Growth has an AOE. So we'll click that. And from here, you can see that Spike Growth has this AOE icon, uh, this sphere. And if I hover over that, it says place area of effect token. So literally, if I press that button, the perfect sized AOE will appear. Now currently in beta there is a um, a setting that will allow you to place this on the token that you have it selected on. So maybe it's coming uh, originating from you. So you select your token, press that button, and the AOE will drop from on you. Maybe you were, you're doing a fireball and you want to place it, or that spike growth thing, you want to place it on this enemy. So you would select the enemy, press that AOE button, and then it would drop directly uh, it would be centered on them. Again, that is in the current beta. It should be on the live release, uh, you know, within a week or two or three. Uh, these releases come out rather quickly. Um, continuing on, though, of course, uh, maybe your DM doesn't know what spike growth does or you want to show with the rest of the party what it does. You click on the ability or the name of the um, spell feature whatever and this little side window will pop up and from here you can of course read it to them if you want to or you can click this button send to game log and uh, that's all the way at the top and it will send this beautiful description to the game log um, it's a great way to be able to share this information with everyone and uh, let it be seen very easily uh, finally I think what I will demonstrate in here is this extras tab within above VTT. So sometimes you might have a companion, a pet, a sidekick, whatever. Uh, you can go into manage extras uh, into here and just go in and start, you know, adding whatever sidekick you have. I've added this uh, Mastiff to his character sheet already. And from here you can click it and you can see 
It has all these injected rollable buttons in here. Uh, standard D&D Beyond Sheet does not have these rollable buttons, I believe, but uh, once you have above VTT installed, these buttons should appear for you. And you can, of course, click and roll from them and roll right to the game log. Uh, additionally, you see this plus sign here. If I click that and then I uh, hide my sheet, you can see it has added this Mastiff onto the uh, scene for me. Uh, and able to do this, you do need to have the DM connected to the scenes or the above VTT in general so that um, you can't just randomly place these onto the scene. But you can right click this token now and roll directly from the uh, token or the stat block. So again, I hit this to hit roll, natural 20, classic Mastiff. Uh, let's go ahead and roll that damage. Um, and then if you want, same as like the icon rolls on the... Um, on the uh, character sheet, if I press bite right here, the title, it'll roll the to hit and the damage roll at once. Um, very simple, very easy to do. Um, I think one last quick thing I will highlight is if you right click the token and uh, go down to token auras, you can click enable auras. And you can see I have this fancy ray one set up here. I'm just gonna set it to this uh, classic static blur or none and uh, lower the opacity, the transparency a little bit so that I can see through it. But there are different presets in here, so uh, maybe a Paladin's Aura, uh, Spirit Guardian's uh, Aura around them, and you can of course change the color if you'd like. Um, maybe it's more of a necrotic one, uh, Spirit Guardian, so change it to a black color. But in addition to this, um, you can hide the aura from other players, or you can set up an animation with a custom mask. As you can see uh, in here, you can add your own custom mask. I have like this like one uh, cone shaped one here that works well for like vision, uh, like a lantern, bullseye uh, lantern that is. Um, but you can go in here and, and set any of these animations if you'd like, or uh, filter mask, um, and or clipping mask rather. And if I click on say like this uh, Lefander one, you can see I've got like all these little suns uh, glinting around me. Um, if I go into the settings and I uh, turn off this disabled DDB dice where possible uh, and then change it to one of these other ones that actually have like an animation, you can see it will actually spin and uh, rotate around the token. Um, oops, let me go ahead and make sure that my animation is working. Oh, there we go. I turned on the wrong setting. That's why. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. You can see that we have the reduced animation movement turned off here, and this these rays are now spinning around. If I turn this back on, it'll uh, stop them. And this is really helpful if someone's like have, has a machine that's really lagging, having a lot of issues, and we've got animations on the scene, and everyone's having a great time, but you know, Johnny, for whatever reason, their computer uh, is a potato and is is bugging out. So you're like, hey Johnny, just turn on reduced animation movement, and you should be good, and you know it should fix things up. There's lots of different fun settings in here, and you can, of course, like uh, you know, play with these and change them if you'd like, uh, change the colors, and uh, use them for different kinds of abilities. Um, so I think that's a good starting place of a tutorial on the player end of things. If you have any questions, specifics, feel free to let me know, and I will, of course, respond and help out as much as I can.